Hello everybody, Glass Half Dead here, and today I want to talk to you about where to start playing Kill Team. Yes, of course, this is a very, very, very beginner guide. If you're already playing Kill Team, there's not really much here for you. But it's recently come to my attention that a lot of my viewers don't actually play Kill Team, and it's something they think about doing and so I thought perhaps if you're a completely new player you've never you know you've just been enticed by the gallow dark terrain into the dark or you've just you know your local playgroup has just suddenly decided to get into it I thought I'd tell you how to do it because although I have been playing Kill Team since it launched and I've had you know uh, professionals as close as you could get it in the industry telling me this is what you need to buy, this is what you need to do, this is how the game's going to work. The whole time I've been talking about it, it occurs to me that some people, they are completely new to war games. They don't know what to do. Or perhaps they're big board gamers and they saw this very cool uh, movement system here uh, with uh, shapes and colours uh, and numbers. And they thought, hey, that's not as intimidating as a full war game, that's a cool board game mechanic. I'm going to jump into that. Either way, I hope I can make this a little bit easier for you to understand. We're going to go over all of the core products, what is still good to buy over a year later after release, where should a beginner start, where should uh, a 40k player start, where should someone that knows they want to go into kill team start but doesn't care about 40k, etc, etc. I'm also going to very briefly explain the difference between Into the Dark and Octarius, which is really Gallow Dark and um, Overworld, really, but, you know, whatever. Uh, we'll explain that in a moment. And then I also want to just very quickly explain just one of the really simple core things that you have to know when you're reading rules. So this isn't a how to play. This is just a how do you build a list? Because you need to know what models to buy. And uh, I was reading on Reddit and somebody came along and said, oh, uh, you know, which models do I need to buy? And it occurred to me that, oh, right. If you, you know, it's not always the easiest thing. So I'm going to explain to you how to read your, your chosen factions list so you know what models you will need to buy. Uh, however, I will say before we get into that, you know, that's the video, hopefully. Nice and snappy, because you know that's me. I'm straight to the point. Never ramble, as you could tell, because of the fact we're already three minutes into this and I haven't told you anything yet. It's going well. Uh, but I would say that the next slide is actually a subscriber-only benefit. So if you are a subscriber, I would like to give you a big double hello. Wow. Wasn't that incredibly wholesome? Chaps, chapesses, chapai. Uh, just bring love to the world, man. Honestly, like, who cares about the rest of this? Uh, I've got merch. I've got a Patreon. If you're into it. My Patreon has, you know, some data cards, some objective markers for Kill Team. Super cool. But just enjoy. Okay, let's get stuck in. Boom. So, the core rulebook. Oh, right. Okay. Hold on. Before we talk about the core rulebook, Games Workshop makes you pay for their rules. Okay? Some people are very against that. I'm going to talk as if it is impossible to find the rules for the game online, okay? However, I assume that we all know how Google works, and we all know that if you type in the rules you want and put free on the end, you will find those rules for free, okay? Now, with that said, I'm going to talk as if that doesn't exist, because if, if that's what you want, just go do that. You're done. Although also, if you're not fully committed yet, there are actually, from GW, free rules for the game. So we will get to those, but we, but I put them later in the slideshow, apparently, because obviously I was going to start by letting everybody know you could just download these, these rules for free. Okay, right. Uh, so the core rulebook. If you want to play the game, at some point you are going to need to know the core rules. Um, you probably do need to buy this core rule book. Therefore, this tells you everything. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. They did release a uh, Kill Team Light rule set, completely free, but it's missing a few key things. 
I think it's a really great thing that they did with the free kill team light rules, but it if you then took those rules to a tournament, you'd be missing a few key pieces. Totally fine to just play among you and your friends. There will be a few weird edge case scenarios that the core rulebook would fix, but actually very cool. But if you want to play the game, you need the core rules, okay? So what I would actually say, do you need to buy the core rules? Go and use the Kill Team Light rules first. If you like it, then go and buy the core rulebook. We then get to the compendium. Now this is, um, this book is just a series of data sheets and army lists. This uh, contains, I think it is 18 factions across all of the different super factions, Imperium, Chaos, Xenos, etc. I feel there's another super faction, but, um, and, it, and it gives you all of those. It tells you how all of the uh, basic teams work. Uh, and we're going to talk about list building in a second. But the list building in the compendium is a little bit different from list building in the specialist teams. Just know that this is a great place to start for 40k players that just want to dabble their toes because it has all of the core 40k factions here in a list. So if you've got a few 40k armies, you know, Thousand Suns and Craft World Eldar and Space Marines, well, you, you then have all of your possible lists in this book. Okay, we then go to the annual 2022, which I have right next to me here. This is, I almost want to call this the compendium light. So instead of having 18 different factions, it gives you six different factions, which actually um, is pretty good. But now you might be thinking, well, 18 versus six, why would I pick up the annual? Well, the annual has a few other things as well. It also has some multiplayer rules if you want to play with friends. It also has a, a few interesting narrative things thrown in. Different missions sort of thing. Uh, like an endless wave swarm type gameplay mode you can play. However, the six factions here are the real kill team factions. Because there's a slight difference between compendium factions, which are very bare bones. They're going to let you play the full game. However... The difference between a compendium faction and a specialist team for kill team is basically, uh, you know, secondary objectives. Uh, we call them TAC Ops, Tactical Operations, TAC Ops. Uh, they are only given to the specialist teams. Also, generally, the specialist teams tend to be, because at the very least you have more options, more rules to play with, a little bit stronger. And by a little bit, I mean significantly stronger. When you're a brand new player, you can still beat specialist teams with compendium teams. But if you're ever thinking about, you know, I, I actually I'm a really competitive player, I really want to go top tournaments, then the annual is probably your better pick over compendium. Because ultimately, when you get to the higher echelons, specialist teams do become stronger than compendium teams. However, obviously here you only get six teams. So I'm more than happy to say that if you're a Thousand Suns player or an Admech player or a GZ the Colts player, those don't exist, or a Harlequins player, the annual's definitely the pick for you over Compendium. Uh, otherwise, if you're a 40k player, probably the Compendium, but we'll get into that later. Uh, we then have the Kill Team Essentials and we have the Tac Ops cards. Now, do you need to buy these? That is a question. So... The Kill Team Essentials box, let's talk about that. That's the thing I put on the thumbnail of this video. This is important. You kind of need this. This is one of those items where you don't have to buy it. You can do everything without it. It gives you uh, a set of uh, tokens to play the game with. It gives you your measuring sticks, which is where this little meme comes from. Uh, and it also gives you six barricades. You don't have to buy this. However, everything in this little Kill Team Essentials box gets a lot of use in every game you play of Kill Team. So let me quickly break it down for you. The tokens, you could swap them out for generic tokens. Maybe if you play, you know, another war game like Infinity or any sort of uh, fantasy flight game, you, you probably have just lots of tokens lying around. You can make that work 
you're going to have to proxy a bit of things. It won't be obvious to everybody what you're doing with your tokens, but it's not mandatory for the tokens, okay? We then have the barricades. Now, the way the game of Kill Team works is every, every game, you will set down two of these barricades before you set down your models on the board. So think of two barricades as part of your team. They're part of your tactical decisions in every single game. They are almost as important as your actual faction models. So you kind of need them. However, they are at the end of the day just a two inch by one inch high piece of plastic. And it's like, I think it's like two mil thick. There you go. So you don't need to buy that. You can uh, just have some Games Workshop through lying around and just cut it together. Like, you don't need it. We then get to uh, the this bit, the, uh, the, the measuring widgets. Uh, you don't need them at all. There you go. A lot of people complain about them because, you know, oh, I know how inches work. I don't know how these work. Uh, to be clear, Kill Team is a system where we only ever use four... Four measurements. We use, I'm going to use this as a, as a prop. We use a one inch, we use a two inch, we use a three inch, and we use a six inch. And that's it. We never use any other measurement in Kill Team. So these widgets are just a handy little way that you can, you know, mess around on the board without having a big old tape measure. I was going to show you a tape measure, but apparently I don't have it on my desk. Uh, so, you, but you don't need that. You can just use a tape measure. And it's just one, two, three, six. There you go. So you, you don't need the widgets. Do you buy the essentials? That's up to you. Personally, I'd say you probably should. It's just kind of easier. But it's not needed. You can proxy everything in there. Uh, we then go to the Tac Ops cards. The Tac Ops cards, now obviously I just mentioned what those are. These are your secondary objectives. Again, you do not need to buy your Tac Ops cards. In fact, I would even say this is one of the last things you should pick up. Because if you're, I, I wouldn't say, don't even look at your TAC Ops the first few games of Kill Team you play. So I would say, go over, find the Kill Team Light Rules, find the free uh, Intercession Team, play that. Forget TAC Ops, you don't need those. You can play the game legitimately for free, no having to purchase rules, etc. Um, before you decide whether you need to go and buy the extra accoutrement. And TAC Ops cards are one of those that I would say... Feel free to give these a skip for for your first dozen games or whatever, you know? That's okay. You won't be missing much of the game by skipping the Tac Ops. Also, they seem to be included once a year in one of the big boxes, which we'll talk about later. So we then get to the starter box. Now, this is this is an E okay, so inside the starter box you get two full teams. You get the veteran guardsmen. Who are, if you, if you know, the Krieg. And you get the Commandos, who are Orcs. You also get a little bit of terrain. You don't get any vertical floors, but you do get a bunch of little bits of terrain that you can uh, move around and kind of have a, a good few games or two with to begin with. Inside, you also get a starter book. So, uh, it takes you through, you know, step by step, your first few games. You can just look through the book, and it tells you, you know, you get, I think of this, you get uh, 20, uh, 22 miniatures. Uh, and, you know, your first mission will actually just be three models against one model kind of thing. So it really takes you through baby steps through the whole thing. I highly recommend that. If you're looking to get into it, this is a great set. Also, just, you know, hey, just from a money perspective, it's different for every single person. But generally, this starter set is widely regarded as like the best value for money that GW currently sells. So yeah, absolute stunner. I would thoroughly recommend picking up the start set. Also, it has the core rulebook in it, uh, but it has the core rulebook in a smaller format, which actually pretty useful. Uh, the way they make it a smaller format is they take out all of the, like the narrative and the fluff and it's just the rules. So quite handy. However, minor issue with this, and that is it doesn't give you the full rules for both of these teams. 
So if you want, if you love the, uh, which, and we're going to talk about this in just a moment, uh, I th might be the next slide, might not. Um, so every time you get a specialist team, you obviously need the full rules for that specialist team. So if you just buy a box of Pathfinders or of Commandos, it doesn't come with any rules for kill team. So you need to go and buy the rules for that team as a separate purchase. And this starter set, although it gives you two full teams of models and it gives you basic rules to be able to play uh, a few scenarios, it doesn't give you the full specialist team rules for both of those. So it's an additional purchase. However, luckily, the additional purchase you have to make there uh, will, will include, it's called the Octarius Codex. Uh, it will include specialist rules for both teams because they were originally sold as a pair from the Octarius box set. There you go. We then go to quarterly boxes. So every three months, th this is the kill team cycle. We get a different big box. These are the latest one here. So, you know, was Shadow Vaults, which I have just down there. Uh, this will give you, so, so far, the formula, th this could change. You never know. I can't see the future. But, so what this gives you is your codex. So that's what I was just talking about. This will give you full specialist rules for two different teams okay uh, it will give you the models for two different teams and it will give you a set of terrain now digging into the weeds a little bit generally the way it seems to work so far is that once a year we will get a big um starter box essentially so the first one we got was called the octarius box the second one we got, I've, I've shown here, that's called the Into the Dark box. And what this is, it's just a really good time for a new player to jump in. These are like the, the big value uh, starter boxes. They are, and they are generally pretty good value, I've got to say. And they will give you all of the Kill Team Essentials box and the Tac Ops cards alongside your two teams and your codex and the core rulebook. So if you can, f if you want to get in, then you're re at the moment you're looking for the Octarius box and the Into the Dark box, and then in a year, nine months, a year, we will probably get another big starter box. In between that, because we're getting for a year, because it's a quarterly box, right? In between the big starter boxes, we are getting smaller quarterly boxes, and these are two teams, terrain, and a codex. Okay. So, should you buy these? Well, it's entirely up to you how much you want to commit monetarily wise. Certainly, uh, in the first year of Kill Team, you can't really get any of those boxes anymore, but they had very varied terrain. In the second year, it seems that every box is going to be the, uh, the Gallo Dark boarding actions terrain. Uh, so, some people don't want multiples of that. Some people will want multiples of that, like myself. Because uh, you, we, we know that there's going to be an Arcs of Omen format for 40k where you can use two boxes of it. So that's kind of up to you. I would generally say if you like the terrain and one team, you should buy it. Or if you like any two aspects of the box, buy it. So terrain, one team or both teams. And you could just sell the other bit that you don't need. Like... People will buy it off eBay. So there you go. And you'll normally end up saving money from buying those things individually. We then go over to branded teams and books. So this is kind of everything else. This is everything else from the Kill Team product line. And I'm going to explain what they are very quickly. This is basically your quarterly boxes, but deconstructed. So what I've put on here is, if I go back, you see this box here? 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 The Chownath box, this was sold as a big quarterly box. It cost whatever, £120, let's say. I think it was less than that, but £120 for that. And what you got inside it was this. It was two teams, the Pathfinders and the Novitiates. It was the Codex Chownath. And it was the Terrain Killzone Chownath. So this released Chownath. And then three months later, this seems to be roughly what Kill Team does. All of the individual bits release. So, as I said, if you like any two elements of this, you should probably just buy the quarterly box. 
But let's say you've missed that because you can't buy the big Chownath quarterly box yet uh, anymore. But you can buy a Pathfinder's box. You can buy a Novitiate's box. You can buy the Chownath book. I'm actually not sure if you can buy Killzone Chownath anymore. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I would assume you can. Who knows? Uh, so, if you know your team that you want, you can just go to the Games Workshop website, go to the box products, go to Kill Teams, uh, Kill Team, and look at the factions, and just look for any of these Kill Team branded boxes. That's your team. You're done. One box. You don't need to buy a second. You buy Pathfinders or Novitiates, and you buy the Chownath book, and that's your that's you done. You have the Tau faction box for Kill Team. You're done. Uh, and pretty good, I think. Uh, it's, it's very simple. There are very, very few teams where you want to buy two boxes. In general, you buy one Kill Team box. And you buy the rules, and you're done. Right, <clears throat> so we now talk about Into the Dark versus Overworld. But these are really, yeah, okay. So, what am I talking about? Well, Into the Dark is the name of this quarterly box, but it's also the name for the current series of games that we are playing in a competitive pack. This is our, we call them Critical Operations. That's the fancy, you know, narrative phrase for... Uh, tournament games, matched play games. This is, uh, if you're playing in a tournament, you'll be playing from that that pack. Uh, or if you're just playing a pickup game and you want to make sure people are playing for the same rule set without any crazy custom rules, you'll be playing the Critical Operations pack. It's a series of nine different missions. You roll on a table, you pick a mission, right? That's what this year, this current season, which is a year, of Kill Team is giving us the Into the Dark, the Gallo Dark set. Then on the other side, we have uh, the Overworld or Octarius or just Core. We had this for all of the first year. And again, if you go out and buy the starter set or the Core rulebook, you're going to end up with nine missions. And they are, again, critical operations. And it's, it's very common that people just play from the Critical Operations pack. Uh, because these are just your match play missions. They're designed to be balanced, as opposed to the narrative missions, which you get nine of again in, in every book. Uh, and they aren't necessarily designed to be balanced. They're designed to give you an interesting story when you play the game. Which is awesome, of course. But it's not what everybody always wants. So, should you buy... Into the Dark, or should you buy Overworld, the core? Uh, so, uh, whatever you want, really. Uh, currently, Into the Dark is uh, is what's being pushed this year. It's also tying into 40k Arcs of Omen, which will last for, you know, a year, I guess. Um, people generally like it. It's a very interesting piece of terrain. I'm, I'm enjoying my time playing the Into the Dark set. But it's not necessarily any better or worse than the core. Uh, I think that the core stuff is just as good. The big difference, I would say, the, the actual big difference is that Into the Dark is using a very specific set of terrain. And... Your Critical Operations Missions Pack tells you how to set out the board for every single mission. The core books, they don't tell you what terrain to use. They don't tell you how to set out terrain at all. There you go. That's the real difference. There's also one or two other like um, line of sight differences for Into the Dark versus Core. But in general, it's really just, do you want to be, do you like the aesthetic of Into the Dark and want to be told how to set your board out? We'll probably go with that. Also, those are the releases we're going to be getting for the next year. Do you not really feel that vibe? You're not, you're not, you're not jazzing it. Uh, probably go with Core then, and forget Into the Dark. Okay. Ooh, all right. Th that's the product. That is the product list for Kill Team. We now have. Yeah, we're still going. Let's power through. We now have to talk about building a list. I want to very quickly go over this because at some point you're going to sit down, whether you've got the rules online or whether you've gone out and bought them, whether you've done what I've said, 
and you've bought the compendium and you're now flicking through it like, wait, what? Huh? Uh, or if you've gone and picked up, like I said, the, the Pathfinder box and the Chownath Codex and you're looking at it like, oh, wait, but I, th I, th I was told that we can use stealth suits in this game. Where are they? Allow me to explain. So, <clears throat> there are no points in Kill Team. That's a big thing to note, okay? If you're coming over from 40k or another war game, there are no points. Not how the game works. You are never going to have to add up points. Apart from equipment. Shh. Uh, there are two different ways of building lists. If you're playing from the compendium, you build something called a fire team. And every faction in the game can take two different fire teams, apart from space wings who take one. Okay? It's very simple. The fire teams, for example, for Tau, and this is where people get a little bit confused. The fire teams for Tau can be Pathfinders, Stealth Suits, and or uh, Fire Warriors. Okay? And you're taking two different fire teams, so you can mix and match. You can say, I want a Stealth Suit team, and I want a Pathfinder team. Or you can say, I want two Stealth Suit teams. Or you can say, I want a Fire Warrior team and a Pathfinder team. And you can mix and match for every different mission you're in. Okay? You just take two fire teams. It tells you in the compendium what that fire team is made up of. So the fire team for stealth, stealth suits is three stealth suits. The fire team for pathfinders is, I think it's seven pathfinders? Something like that. And, and that's it. That's what you take. And it tells you to take a gunner or not take it. It tells you to take a rail rifle. tells you to take a fusion uh, gun, etc. And that's it. No points. We then look at the specialist teams. Now the specialist teams, this is where there's a little bit of confusion. So again, if we were to look at the, uh, the, the actual Pathfinder team, who are the specialist team for the Tau faction for 40k, they have, I think they have one leader and then 13 slots. Slots, that's a tough word, okay? And there are options you can pick within that list. So most of the specialist operatives, like a medic or a grenadier, etc., uh, you can you're only allowed to take one. Okay. However, there are a few options. So you can take uh, either an iron rifle or a rail rifle for a gunner twice, and you have to decide. You can choose which one to take. But then pathfinders actually have an additional thing, which is a, a drone option and in fact one of these drone options is so powerful it takes up two slots and you are running 12 slots because you've got your leader who's one option you have to take that and then you get 12 slots 12 options okay and most of these you can only take once and that's how it works okay Trust me, when, when you look at the build, the army list, it, it will make sense. Uh, in fact, we're, we're about to look at one. But just understand that there are no points. Instead, we work on slots where some things will take up two slots. But most things take up one. And in general, good rule of thumb, all special guns, like, you know, a ion rifle, rail rifle, uh, missile launcher, heavy bolter, they generally can only ever be taken once. Very, in fact, there are very, very few options with like a cool plasma gun that you could take twice. So that's kind of Kill Team's inbuilt limitation. We then have a roster. So every single faction, oh, sorry, one more thing. The Tau faction from Compendium and the Tau faction from Specialist Teams do not cross, Okay. This is something that comes, I, I see this mentioned a lot uh, as a question. Just because the Compendium Tau can take Stealth Suits does not mean that the Specialist Tau can take Stealth Suits. Yes, they are the same overarching faction from 40k, but they're completely different. They don't share anything rules-wise between the two of them, okay? So your Compendium Tau, your Compendium Tau. If you're Specialist Tau, your Specialist Tau. Never the twain shall meet. Every single faction 
uh, the game works on a roster based system okay so that means uh, every 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 game you go in and you have a list of 20 models okay now due to the way kill team currently works that generally means you could take pretty much any option you want and again there are no points and so kill team is based around the roster and it's assumed that you are always taking the best guns for the job so uh you know like it is just assumed from a power level perspective that if you're going into uh you know power armor teams well you've probably taken a plasma and a melter right but if you're going into squishy guardsmen well you've probably taken a flamer and and still a plasma but ignore that so it's assumed because of the roster that you always take the best weapon again this is a balancing mechanic we're still playing with no points you're never going to have to add points up it's very simple once you get your head around no points uh, and we play with slots and we play with a roster it's always assumed you take the best possible thing then in addition that's kind of your models that's you know the fire team or the special team tells you the models you need we then have the roster which lets us put them all together so we're taking the best option and then when it comes to building the list you will also see archetypes and equipment now archetypes these are different decks these are the tac ops cards okay this is where they come into play obviously in match play when you're playing there will be a primary objective which is generally stand on a point nice everyone loves standing places but archetypes this will be you know recon security infiltrate seek and destroy and then Every specialist faction will get their own set of three different uh, tac ops that are unique to their faction. And that's it. And then you choose three of these to go into the game, and that's your that's your that's your secondary objectives. Okay? Which you are trying to get, but your opponent isn't. So that's where so you're both doing the same primary, but you have different secondary objectives that you can select to like work well with your team, your composition, and your personal play style. Uh, so that's archetypes. We then have equipment. So just like you're bringing a roster to the table, which is, okay, I'm going into this guy, so I know I want a melter instead of a flamer, right? You're picking the best operatives from your list, or the best fire teams from your list, to go into that, that opponent. We then... Also, as the final thing we do to build our team, give them equipment. Uh, we're not going to go too deep into equipment, but just understand that equipment, every faction gets 10 equipment points that they can spend on their equipment. And that is, it doesn't need to be modeled on, on your models, uh, but it'll, it'll be things like, you know, uh, a foregrip for the Kassakin. So they don't take a negative to their ballistic skill if they're shooting Overwatch. Or it will be uh, a stim for the Navy Breachers. So they get plus one wound in the game. It, it'll be that kind of thing. And you can also take grenades in this way. Or you can take uh, different ways of being able to, you know, climbing ropes to move up and down buildings easier. Which are things that you're not always going to need. Because obviously if you're playing Into the Dark, well, you're never going to have anything to move up and down. But if you're playing Overworld, you probably do want a little bit of help moving up and down terrain. That's equipment. And again, the point of that is that you can customize your team even further from the roster to go into the enemy faction you're going into. Okay. With that said, I now want to move on at a mere 35 minutes in, I told you it was going to be quick and seamless, right? No rambling. I don't think I've rambled. I've done pretty well. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's do it. Okay. We're now talking about how each different type of player should get into Kill Team. Every player should start here. These are the free rules. This is Kill Team Light. There will be links in description, don't worry. And this is the intercession team. Why should you start with the intercession team? It's a really good team that allows you to make mistakes and not get punished too much for it. Very strong team, and it's free. 
there you go. Also, I've got to say, it's also a very, and I use this in a very good way, generic team. So the beauty of this team is uh, you can run them as Space Wolves or Blood Angels or Black Templars or Ultramarines. No issues. You have the rules in there to make them act the way you want them to act. But also, at the end of the day, they're just 32 mil bases, which is kind of the, you know, the standard size for anything bigger than an Imperial Guardsman base. So, you know, uh, and, and then they're also quite generic in their loadouts. So they're just shooty gun or stabby sword. So if you have, let's say, uh, you're, again, I'm, apparently I'm a Tau main. If you have stealth suits, they're on the same base size. You could just run six stealth suits that you bought for the compendium and say, yeah, these are just, I'm just playing them as intercession because that seems fun to me. And yeah, they, they just all have the same gun and actually the fusion gunner, well, he's the grenadier. He's, he's the intercession gunner. Um, and, that, and that's it. Uh, and honestly, nobody would really care. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, these are free. Everyone should start with the light rules because then you're getting to play the game in a slightly easier format. Um, even if you're even if you're you know going the internet free route for rules, you should probably start with the light rules. It only skips a few things and it's laid out in a much better way. I'd say start with the light rules uh, before going for anything else. And the intercession team, most people. You know, obviously, GW knows their target market. Most people know Space Marines and have Space Marines lying around. If you've ever bought anything from GW, if you've ever walked into a store, you leave with a Space Marine, essentially. So, uh, most people can scrounge up six Space Marine operatives, okay? Now, on the off chance you actually do want to get into it, uh, it they use two types of models. They use Assault Intercessors and Intercessors. This is melee guys, range guys, okay? Very basic. Uh, you can do this as a one box team. So Assault Intercessors are, uh, is, a, is a box of 10 dudes. Intercessors is a box of 10 dudes. You don't have to mix and match them. It's probably more effective if you do, but if you want to just go out and buy one box of Intercessors or Assault Intercessors, you still have six models in there that are gonna make a legal Intercession Squad kill team. Or you can buy two and mix them together and mix and match. Or there are ways to get, you know, one box teams that do mix and match. But that's that's for another video that I've done elsewhere. Just know that all players, this is probably where you should start, if, if we're being honest. Um, even if you're two completely new players, start with the kill team light rules and both of you pick up an intercession squad team. And just play against each other. Forget everything else. That's going to be a fun, cool little way to play the game. Honestly, everything after this just gets a little bit more nitty gritty. You know, this is the core. This is where everybody should start. Okay. Now, let's say you are a brand new player. You're somebody coming over from this, right? You've, you've seen, you've heard of the cool ideas and mechanics. And you're like, oh, yeah, seems fun. Let's jump in. Where do you start? The starter set is great, okay? I think there's, a, there's very little reason for someone to not pick up a starter box here. Great value, two very good teams, a bit of terrain, and you do need terrain that, that looks very cool, um, and you get the core rules, and you get the essentials, and, and everything. Like, this is a great box to start with. 10-10, no notes, amazing. Uh, then, you know, I would say, like, even if you don't want both of the both of the starter box teams, this gives you your rules, this gives you your essentials, this gives you your attack ops, and a bit of terrain. Then, go and find the cool models. Best way to do this is to go on uh, the GW website, go to boxed, boxed games on the top right bar, uh, click kill team in the left bar, and then just look through the different models that you can buy. Um, there you go. And here, here's a few, here's a selection of a few. Um, I think there are some great, great models out there. I, I actually, I plan to do like a, a, a full kill team model range review uh, soon, because I think 
we have some amazing models for the game at the moment. Um, very happy with like 90% of them. Um, we are absolutely spoiled for joys. We have some great models. So just go find the cool model you want to play, buy that one box, and then also buy the, uh, the codex to go with it so that you know how to play them. And you're done. You've got your team. This isn't 40k. This is one box, okay? All specialist models are one box, okay? So that's all you have to do. Browse for the cool model, buy it. But let's say you're a 40k player. Yeah, rip. <laughs> F's in chat, lads. Uh, good question. So let's assume you have, again, I'm a Tau main, it seems. Let's assume that you have a, um, a 40k army. For the purposes of this, let's assume it's a Tau army, because that's, that's all the pictures I've used. Uh, again, there's going to be a link in the description, but certain of the specialist uh, f kill team teams have now come over to be uh, fully usable in 40k. Obviously, I give here the example of the Crute Farstalkers, but there are others, others as well. But, in fact, if you're a Tau, a t a tau player, You've got a lot going for you in Kill Team, I've got to be honest. So, you, let's, and I'm answering this as if you're just married to the faction, right? As many people in 40k are. So, I said here, get the faction from Compendium. Which, for Tau players, so you need to go and buy the Compendium, because you already have the models. You already have a Pathfinder team, a Fire Warrior team, and a Stealth Suit team. So, you just need the rules for it. That's the Compendium. Then... You can go and buy your faction's box, which is the Pathfinder's box. Now, you already have Pathfinders, right? Yeah. Except, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, because uh, let's be honest, we all like new models, and this is giving you new models, which is awesome. Um, the way Kill Team works is the specialist teams are either entirely new sculpts, or they're going to give you an upgrade sprue. So it's possible to kit bash your own specialist team. But for example, uh, I think the Pathfinder team just gives you some extra weapons, some extra poses, some extra heads, uh, and some different arm options so that you can have a drone controller or you can have a grenadier, etc. Uh, with throwing a grenade. Um, all kit bashable, but also 100% just works for your 40k army as another Pathfinder squad. So as you're buying Kill Team, you're buying 40k models. Let's keep that in mind as well. All of these models are usable. And then again, looking at Tau, you also have Fast Farstalkers, who, I, I, I will quickly point out, are on 28 mil bases, whereas regular Kroot are on 25. So if you proxy them as just regular Kroot, uh, you know, Kroot Carnivores in 40k, they're technically on the wrong base size, I believe in general you're allowed to go up a base size, so it, nobody would actually have an issue for you. But I, I think competitively it would be a, a minor downgrade for you because you have a larger base. Uh, however, they also now have their own data sheet. So you can, again, you're buying models for Kill Team, but they just go straight into your 40k army. You are the real winners, I've got to be honest. I mean, apart from the game you play. Again, rip, sorry. But, uh, yeah, every... Kill Team can be used in 40k, sometimes as a proxy, but sometimes as its own thing. And that's it. 40k players, take your faction, buy your faction stuff. Most things only have one option, you know, whether it, if so, if it's um, Sisters of Battle, you would have your Compendium, uh, Adeptus Sororitas, sorry, you would have your Compendium, which is just essentially um, two, fire, uh, two fire teams of Battle Sisters, or some of your little funky, crazy zealots. Uh, and then your specialist team would be Novitiates, who are their own rule set uh, in your codex. And that's it. So Compendium and Specialist Team. Now, let's say you are a Kill Team player. You know you're a Kill Team player. You don't need anything else. You just... You, you know you want in. All your friends play Kill Team. You know you like your friends. People, right? But like, this is it. You know you want in. Where do you start? 
Again, the starter box is going to give you two really good teams. Definitely. And it's going to give you all of your essentials, which you probably need to play the game. And then, quarterly boxes. That's where things kick off for you. So the only reason I push you towards a quarterly box is because the starter set's great, and it's going to give you your core rules, it's going to give you your essentials, all of that good stuff that you need, but it doesn't actually give you the full specialist rules, does it? So technically, again, if you were to buy the starter box, you would then have to go out and buy the Octarius Codex as well. Then you do have two full teams, and they're two good teams. But the quarterly boxes, they give you terrain, which you're going to need. They give you two teams. And since you're a kill team player, you want two teams. You want options, right? And it gives you your full rules. So, you know what? Whatever the next quarterly box is, if you buy the starter set and you buy the next quarterly box, you have like four full teams. That's a lot. And if you're a kill team player, kill team player, not kill team collector, just to be clear, <laughs> unlike me, uh, that's four teams. That's kind of more than enough. You can, like, four teams is a really good amount of variety. You're going to be getting used to their different nuances for a long, long time. Like, a solid, you know, six months of play, if you're sp spreading it out over four teams, like, you're not going to get bored. You're going to be learning different ways, different factions play. You're going to be learning different tricks here and there. Uh, four, four things is more than enough. Uh, and so that's how I would recommend you getting into the game. A star set and then just look at quarterly boxes. And with that said, my gosh, we're going to get it done in under 50 minutes. Let's stick to that. I'd like to give everybody that stayed to the end a big triple hello. Wow. The wholesomeness knows no bounds. Guys, girls, everybody in the world, uh, I vaguely am heading towards a how to play kill team now that we have uh, into the dark out and and we need a new line of sight guide for that etc um and this was kind of my first jump into it uh looking at the absolute basics how do you buy the game <laughs> right <clears throat> how to play is great but how do you buy um and i really wanted to cover that list building obviously i, I am going to go into that in a future video once i start my full how to play series but this this is bizarrely to, my, to me at least where you have to actually start you start with right but what do i buy because a lot of people they're hyped for models let's be honest they're hyped for models and they want to pick something up so that they can play with some fun stuff so you have to start with a how to buy okay well you know what um on the off chance you see any new players uh saying i'm confused Hopefully there has been something in this video that has guided new players um, or players that are hesitant towards that uh, in some manner. Uh, and if you're looking for the rules, I already have, not to toot my own horn, but very genuinely, literally the best line of sight guide. Um, I use a lot of examples. I make it a little bit fun because we're doing like a training course with a, with an orc commando. Um, and it's all perfectly explained as well. Very, very easy to follow. So check that out. Um, and hopefully I will soon be doing future guides in a similar vein. So it's kind of fun and fun to watch as opposed to just like a, a bit of a, a boring reading of the text. Anyway, that'll be a little bit further away. But here's your buyer's guide. Hopefully this has been helpful. I realize I haven't done a, a faction buyer's guide, which normally gets good views. I will do that in the future. Um, but again, I'm gonna I'm gonna really pitch it at new players, players that legitimately don't know how the game works. I think they do need a buyer's guide per faction, whereas anyone that's kind of already read the books probably doesn't. So, yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting back to absolute basics. Anyway, everybody, this has been lovely. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you're amazing. I'm gonna use a final sound effect on my soundboard. I don't know which. Oh, here we go. Even in death I still serve.